It seems so long ago now. But does anybody remember back the, the weeks after Trump was elected, December, November, December 2016, January 2017? Does anybody remember the hundreds and hundreds of stories all over the country about how Trump people were getting violent? They were just they were just roaming the country, beating the hell out of black people and Jewish people wherever they could find them for no reason whatsoever. We did a lot of stories on that, and just about every one we ran into was one big facts, fat hoax enabled by reporters who just could get enough, not get enough of this fairy tale that Trump people were going around beating the hell out of black people. But, but you know, what makes it worse is that during the entire time, it wasn't it wasn't white on black violence. It wasn't Trump on non-Trump supporters. It was the black on white violence that was still wildly out of proportion and easy to document with videos. A lot of them look just like this. This thing that got been getting a lot of attention that happened in San Antonio just a day or two ago. President, you ain't support. Right now, police are looking for that man who was caught on tape, on camera, throwing a drink at a teenager in that video, the man in the red hat, and walks off with the teenager's hat, pulled it off so aggressively, also pulled out some hair with it. News Force San Antonio's Joe Galley talked with the teenager at the receiving end of that attack, joins us live in the newsroom with the latest. Joe? Randy, last night, three friends, all 16 years old, walked to the Whataburger on Thousand Oaks in Nacogdoches on the north side. They got some food, and then this happened. For the president. You ain't support You can see that man throw a drink in 16-year-old Hunter Richard's face before leaving the restaurant with Hunter's Make America Great Again hat. Some of his hair, as you mentioned, was pulled out during the assault. The kids were completely shocked, and they say the guy attacked them without any provocation. They posted this video to social media to try to find out who the attacker is, but Hunter says he didn't think it would go viral. I didn't think it was going to generate that amount, like, the amount of, like, what people were doing. Like, I was looking at the comments, and some people were like, oh, yeah, like, this is uncalled for, and then people were like, you know, just mixed opinions. But I didn't think it would blow up to what it is right now. Now, right now, the video has more than 1.4 million views. Hunter did file a police report. We so why don't we um, take a little trip down memory lane? I think I made this video, this, like, six-minute video, back in the spring of 2017, and it kind of documents some of these, these stories about how Trump is creating this climate of violence that's leading to all this mayhem and chaos when it was all one big fat lie none of it was documented all of it was fairy tales but when it came time to documenting black on white violence it was like how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds do you want on video how many because that's how many there are. Let's take, a, let's take a little look at that. But while reporters and editors and public officials and all sorts of people all over the country are scrambling to draw attention to these non-existent attacks on Jewish community centers and black people, black on white violence, black criminality proceeds apace wildly out of proportion. Here's a story from Philadelphia in this morning, yesterday's paper. Uh, Lord, you know, you have to really read between the lines and you have to talk to people on the Philadelphia Police Department. But it says, what did it say? It says a couple people were arrested for, uh, beating up a few white girls. They're in the hospital with a mild concussion. Definition of a mild concussion. One that happens to somebody else. The real story is there were 10 to 20 black people congregating around, harassing, taunting, threatening. These two white girls from this upper middle class part of Philadelphia called Lower Marion. Next thing you know, they're beating them, putting them into the hospital. You know, if there's a crowd of 20 people around and a couple kids peel off and beat the hell out of a bunch of white, couple of white girls. I mean, how many people are involved in that beating? Two, three, or all 20? Correct answer, all 20. 
Don't confuse that with this story, though, because they sound kind of similar, don't they? A fight broke out at a septic station in West Philadelphia. Three girls are now accused of setting another girl's hair on fire. Action News reporter Jeanette Reyes is live at Southwest Detectives with more. Good morning, Jeanette. Good morning, Tam. Police are saying all of the people involved here were young teenage girls. It started with a fight and ended with one girl's hair set on fire and another who narrowly escaped serious stab wounds. The disturbing attack happened close to 7 Tuesday evening near 46th and Market Streets. SEPTA says the three suspects and the victim, all between the ages of 13 and 16, got into a fight just outside of the station. The 16-year-old victim ran to the station to get some protection from the group of girls. That's when the teens followed her, pinning her to the ground, and assaulted her. She gets thrown to the ground. The young lady pulls a can of hairspray out of her bag and then a uh, lighter, and she ignites the uh, hairspray with her lighter, which catches fire to the young lady's uh, hair, burns her hair, and burns the back of her neck. Police say that wasn't the only victim. The girl's 13-year-old cousin was also attacked, this time with a knife. The knife is dropped on scene, and it's a look at the 13-year-old jacket. There's numerous slash marks to the jacket. Thank God it's a cold evening out here, and she had a heavy jacket on because the knife never penetrated. And out in beautiful St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, stop me if you've heard this one before. A couple of black people, part of a larger group of black people. They, they stalk, track down, threaten, they ultimately assault. A young lady getting off their mass transit system up there. Another example of black on white violence in St. Paul and in the Twin Cities where everything, you know, is supposed to be, so, that's, you know, that's Garrison Keillor country, right? That's, um, what do you call it? Um, the radio show. I forget. I listen to it. I should know the name of the damn show. See, it's no surprise to a lot of people that Philadelphia is a center of black mob violence and black on white crime. But when people hear this stuff happens in St. Paul, and in Minneapolis, that is a surprise when they hear it happens there, Milwaukee, Seattle, Portland. Just go down the coast, San Francisco, L.A., come on over, well, say Lewis, Kansas City, of course. On and on and on. But as we, anybody who knows from watching this channel, we document how reporters and public officials are in denial, deceit, and delusion about it. They just won't connect the dots. They won't tell us what's going on. They ignore, deny, condone, excuse, encourage, and even lie about it. If you omit critical details of a crime, you're not just lying about it, you're aiding and abetting it. In the exact same way that the 20 girls, 20 girls and guys who stood around and watched those, uh, watched that, uh, th those girls from Lower Marion get the hell beat out of them, putting them in the hospital. People who ignore that are the same as people on the scene who aid, actively aid and abet it. Anyway, they figured out who the black dude was. He was a bartender at some place down the street. He got fired. I don't know if the police have arrested him yet. I don't know if we have started to hear the chants, the chorus of, he's mentally ill, let's let him go. But whenever I hear myself say that, it's like, are we reliving some kind of bad 70s cop show? Where uh, Captain Kirk, James, um, James, William Shatner, you know, playing whatever, I forget the name of the guy he played. I mean, once every show he would get up there and remind people that we're catching all these people, convicting them, and they're right back out on the street. This is what we see happening every day. All of a sudden, everything gets turned around. The victims are the perpetrators because they wore a MAGA hat. The perpetrator is the victim of that white racism the MAGA hat creates. And nobody thinks it's a big deal because thinking that's a big deal is guaranteed to make the black kids angry.